In this tutorial, I'm going to complete the square for the equation x squared plus 6x, and I'm going to use tiles to do it. And it's going to help you understand why it's called completing the square. The burgundy tile represents x squared, and the blue tiles represent 6x. Each one of them is x, and that's why there's six of them. There's one x squared, and one, two, three, four, five, six, or the six x, six blue ones. So when I rearrange the tiles, obviously the square is not completed, and the question becomes, how do I complete the square? Which I'm going to show you now. So I have x squared plus 6x is equal to 0. There's nothing in that box there because it's equal to 0. So the question becomes, how many of these little green squares, a 1 by 1 green square, do I have to add to complete the square? I have to add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There'd be 9 of them, actually. And when I do the left-hand side of the equation, I have to do the right-hand side as well. So I have to add 9 squares over here. So I'll add in 9 right there. So now my equation becomes x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 9. The area of this square is the that distance, or the width, times the height. which is x plus 1, 1, and 1, or x plus 3. So the whole distance is x plus 3. And the height is also x plus 3. So the area of the square is equal to x plus 3 times x plus 3. And these are also our factors, right? So if I rearrange this around a little bit, like you'd normally see it, looks something like this. So now I have x plus 3 to the first power, and x plus 3 to the first power. And when I multiply these two together, I add 1 plus 1, which is 2. And this still all equals 9. Now I take the square root of both sides of the equation, the left and the right side. And this gives us x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus 3. Now I have two equations. I have x plus 3 is equal to 3, and x plus 3 is equal to negative 3. I should put that plus sign there too. So that plus is that, and the minus is that. I solve for x, so I subtract negative 3 from both sides of the equation, which gives me x is equal to 0 for the first one. I subtract 3 from the second equation as well, which gives me x is equal to negative 6. So if I plug either one of these values into the initial equation, it's going to equal to 0. Either one makes that equation equal to zero. So I have two solutions. When I graph this equation, my solution is where it crosses the x-axis, or y is equal to zero. It crosses it at negative six, and it crosses it at zero, when x is zero and when x is negative six. So it turns out I needed to add nine to both sides of the equation to complete the square. In the next video, I'm going to show you why completing the square actually works to solve equations. And I'll show you graphically.